Howdy folks. Today we are back with the Technex SU8055. Tilt it up so you can see. This is the big brother of the uh, 8044 that we've been playing with. And this is the one where last time around we determined that uh, it had a bad uh, Darlington pack. This one uses a STK80, or sorry, STK0050, a uh, 50 watt uh, amplifier final stage. And yeah, so last time around we had pulled out the, uh, the bad STK. We had replaced it with some resistors so that we could do some testing. And uh, offline I went through and did uh, some testing around on the uh, on the whoo, transistors, which are which float around the uh, the power pack. Uh, a lot of the reason I can't shoot video of this, I did I did a little bit on the forty four, but uh, they're mostly tucked up under in here. They're really kind of annoying to get to, and therefore shooting video of getting to them is even you know more kind of impossible. So rather than you know putting myself and you all through the torture of trying to video something and you know that isn't really watchable. I just decided I would do that on my own time. And today we are going to uh, just jump right into swapping out the, uh, or swapping in, sorry, the uh, Darlington pack for the resistors that we had taken out. So, of course, we start with everything unplugged. All right, I think that looks pretty clean, workable enough for what we're doing here. And uh, so now we're going to mount the uh, power pack on, you know, from the other side, do the uh, screw mounting, and then we'll come back over here and solder it all in place. Moving up in the world a little bit here. I'm definitely a fan of this little close quarters <coughs> screwdriver here. Might not be the fastest thing in the world, but it's very effective. Doesn't tear the screw head up doesn't scratch up the surface of the power pack. Overall, I like it. All right, so hopefully that does the job. That's now in there pretty nicely. It is soldered on. None of the pins have continuity with each other, which makes us happy. So now let's uh, hook up a sound source and uh, let's see if this thing actually works. Thank you. 
Okay, that's a decent sign of life. However, we're gonna have to clean out the uh, selector here. So this actually brings us to one of the fun things about this series of amplifiers, and that's that the selector knob here doesn't actually have the selector behind it. If you look over here, when you move the knob, you can see this little pin moving right here. It's because this linear switch is the actual switch and these are mechanical linkages that come up to the selectors on the front. So we have unplugged this guy and I'm now gonna, just gonna go through and uh, deoxid all of the sliders here quick. All right, now we'll let it sit for a few minutes to uh, let all of the uh, deoxid evaporate off. We don't want to power it on while it's still liquid wet. All right, by the magic of YouTube, it's now about 15 minutes later. So all of our deoxid should be dry and we can do another test here. All right, so this is now sounding pretty balanced to me, but one thing I want to show you, and we'll address this in a uh, follow-up video. You see how the right channel is consistently stronger than the left channel on the meters. So the meters can actually be calibrated independently of each other. Listening here, sitting in front of the speakers, it feels like it's uh, actually pretty well balanced. So 
next time around we will go through and do the calibration on the meters and get those in tune with each other and then we'll see if we actually are balanced pushing the same amount of power so yeah i think that'll do for today and we will see you in the next one